Hey, hi, hello. Welcome to today's vlog. Hey, yo. So it is, I don't know what time it is to be honest. 9.47, getting a later start than I wanted to. I'm actually going to do my makeup because I have to go to the post office today. I had ordered like uh, albums from Korea uh, for Stray Kids is like, you know, release, album release. It was supposed to be delivered yesterday and when I checked the shipping like label, it said it was delivered, left with an individual, and signed by the individual. Signed by an S and then my last name. Um, I did not sign for it. I had it sent to my parents' address and nobody, everybody there, no one starts with an S. They all start with the same letter. They did not leave it with me. And so I requested proof of delivery and the USPS sent me a image of some signature and the printed address um, of the person who signed for this package. And when I went to my parents' house, it was on their front porch. Um, so not delivered to an individual. So I don't, I'm, I'm very uncomfortable with what happened with that because if somebody had stolen it, they would have said, oh no, you signed for it. And it's like, I, I genuinely didn't sign for it. So I have to go to the post office. So I don't know what happened. Um, obviously there's nothing, I mean, I got the package, so it's fine, but I would hope that this doesn't happen again in the future. Another crazy thing about that package is it came unsealed. Like there was no tape on it and there was not even like rips on the cardboard box where tape would have been if it had been ripped off. It was completely unsealed and I'm like, how did everything arrive from Korea safely? Like crazy. So also to know that that package was signed on, and it was delivered and it was not sealed is like also kind of like even a bigger red flag. I don't know. I just really hope that this doesn't happen again and I feel like I just need to go there. I also need to buy stamps. So I need to go there, say what I want to say. And it was a expensive like package. So like I would have been furious if they said I signed for it and I hadn't and it got lost. She's learned that she can jump from that chair to my desk. It's dangerous. I'm not going in mad, just going in with the, I don't know who needs to know this, but this happened. I'm uncomfortable with it. And I have the proof that someone signed and nobody did. The post people most likely signed for it, um, which, you know, you can't do that. <laughs> but I am gonna get a little bit of a few words in before I go. Hey, 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 hey. I guess we're putting the chair in the middle of the room now. I am going to get a few words before I go. I'm going to work through my Reedsy um, lesson. I need to catch up, so maybe we can get a few in. But that is what happened yesterday. I swear, I don't know what is going on. Like, I don't believe in, like, like I'm going to say this as a joke. Like, is Mercury in retrograde? Because I, I literally have been having the worst past few days of my life. Um... I'm really glad that that was not taken. I don't know what I would have done. I think I would have lost my mind if that was taken or if some, like the packaging wasn't, like if something fell out in the packaging process. I, ah! This never happens. It's Tuesday today, did I say that? It's Tuesday. I had somebody reach out to me and tell me that they read my book and it was one of the, probably like the one of the last people I ever would have expected to read my book. It was a boy from like one of my old friend groups. I was genuinely so shocked. I'm like, the newest one? And he's like, yeah. His favorite part was the part towards the end that I had actually debated about cutting. And so he was telling me like why he thought that like, that was a good part. And I'm like, you genuinely read it. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Guys around here don't like they don't read romance. Do you know what I mean? Like, guys are... I feel like a lot of guys in general don't. Um, definitely not the guys around here. So it was a shock to get that message. It was a pleasant shock, though. I would have loved to have talked more with him about it, but it was kind of strange. I don't know if, like, he's just shy uh, because I thought the conversation was going well and then he just stopped applying. So I'm like, well, thank you for reading the book. That was... I was very touched. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I feel like 
IRL, not a lot of people read my stuff, um, which is totally fine. I think the only person that I know IRL who reads my books every time is my grandma. Um, my mom doesn't even read my books. So it's like a shock whenever somebody is like, oh, I read this book. I'm like, really? I feel like that is like probably one of the easiest ways into my close circle, like into my heart, but like not romantically, but like also could be romantically, but like just to say that you've read a book of mine or like that you read it unprompted because this person unprompted, like I've never talked to him about books before. Uh, so it's just like, oh, you decided to pick it up. That's like so kind of you. But what a great way if you like wanted to flirt with somebody, just be like, hey, I read your book. Mm -hmm. I doubt he was flirting though. He probably just wanted to read some romance. I don't know. To just go down this personal avenue topic. Coming up on a year since I last went on a date and I, I've downloaded Hinge. Y'all, these men uh, in my area are somewhat alarming. I got a Hinge message once that was like, I think, no, what did it say? You would look great in my bed. And I'm like, someone else recently was like, you look a lot like my future wife. And I'm like, whoa. Uh, pickup lines never work on me. So I think dating apps are probably the wrong way for me to go. And then I also had somebody that I knew from, I knew from, so he was in my brother's grade. And my brother was, was a senior when I was a freshman. And I have never talked to him in my life, never spoke to him um, ever. He slid into my DMs and he was like, oh my gosh, like at two in the morning, two the, I, I'm fast asleep. I go to bed at 10 o'clock, okay? Two in the morning, he slides into my DMs and he's like, oh my gosh, publishing is so cool. Like I, that's, I think that's really cool that you do that. And like I said, talk to me about books. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, good, that's a good segue. And not that that's an invitation. It's different when I know these people, okay? It's different if I know the person IRL. So like if I don't know you IRL, not, not to sound mean, but lately I have had an influx of creepy DMs and it's kind of grating on me mentally. But anyway, anyway, anyway. And I was obviously flattered. And then like when the next day came around, he was not replying as much to me. Like as I was trying to talk about my books and stuff because I thought that was why he swiped up and so the next day he wasn't really talking as much and then i was like okay fine that's whatever and then the same i mean i guess like the next 2 a.m time uh he slides into my dms again and says to be honest i was sober yesterday but i'm not sober now and the real reason why i slid into your dms was because you're very very pretty and i was like well I appreciate you talking to me about my books for a little bit, even if you didn't mean it. I just thought I was pretty, but like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm 25 and like maybe 20, uh, he's 28, 29 and like drunk texting a practical stranger. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing at two in the morning? You don't know me. That's what I'm saying. Like nowadays, nowadays I'm just struggling in the dating sphere. Anybody else have any dating horror stories? recently or dating stories like i said i haven't been on a, on a date in almost a year i also don't know if any of this will be kept in because like i don't know also my hair today is just it's giving natural but i don't love it i had to get a new phone and i'm still so sad about it because i had to get rid of that phone case i was so excited about but i ended up putting a little sticker a little lino sticker in the back so it's enough for now it satisfies me for now but i'm still so bummed that I had to get rid of my cutesy phone case. I'm hoping I can find like another like order form for them, but so far, no luck. Finished the hair, oh, I don't know what to do. I washed it and then I slept on it and then now it's all like not straight, but it's not cutesy wavy, but it's not, uh, I don't know what to do with it. Doesn't matter because right now we're gonna get started writing. We must, we must write a little bit. Actually, I wanted to see if I had any like in my notebook, anything in my notebook that I wrote about this book. The she wrote the boy next door. She wrote the boy next door. 2023 publishing and I didn't stick to that at all. I have the first page is she wrote the boy next door edits and changes. And we published about the boy next door in 2022, October of 2022. So I've had this book since at least 
way before that, and this is all I've written in it. I used to fill notebooks. What happened to me? I think somewhere along the way, and I don't really know when it happened, I just kind of lost my, lost my spark for stuff, uh, lost my excitement, and it's really sad when you think about it. Um, that's why I'm trying to be more intentional with like taking this Readsy course and, you know, looking at these lessons and stuff in a way to, you know, feel ha like dedicated and involved in my stories again. So we're in the same spot, but hours have passed. Um, I am getting ready for my live stream. It starts in about a half hour-ish. Um, it's just a Patreon live stream for my self-publishing tier. Oh my goodness, you guys. I want to talk about something that I am actually struggling with. And it is killing me. And I have been struggling with it for so, so long. And I genuinely don't know what to do. Uh, that, that. I literally used to be able to like see like a movie what I was writing, what I needed to write before I wrote it. I could see it in my head like a movie and then practically transcribe it onto the page. Um, I have always been able to do that. It has been, that's why I feel like I've written so much in such a little time because I was able to like literally scene by scene, I could see the whole book in my head like a movie. Like I could see the characters move. I could see what plot points are happening next. I could see it all. I can't see a single thing anymore and I haven't been able to for a long time and I first noticed it with Madison's book um that's when I first noticed that this was happening I just couldn't picture the stuff I was writing the story I was writing um with Margot's book it was a little bit different I could see bits and pieces but not this on the same extent that I used to be able to just picture it all um I'm writing this Christmas book and again I feel like I just can't see the story and it makes writing so hard and it makes it it makes me feel so defeated because it's like I I don't it's it, writing is so hard now so it's not fun anymore and so I feel bad that it's not fun but like I know why it's not fun because it's hard and I'm struggling so much I'm like I don't know what's wrong I don't know what I don't know what's different I will say I haven't been consuming as much like TV content lately and so maybe maybe the fact that I'm not immersing myself in like more romantic things like movies and romance books and stuff maybe that's what's wrong because I have like the best intentions to write and I sit down and I open the word doc I'm like I, I literally can't even picture the scene I'm supposed to be in right now and it's horrendous it is a horrendous feeling and I don't I don't know what's triggered it and I don't know the fix, but it is feeling very, very upsetting. I'm feeling very upset about it. This is what had me questioning if I needed to quit last fall because I couldn't, I couldn't find that like picture of writing anymore. So like, I don't want to f slide back into that headspace of maybe I'm, maybe that's it. But it's like so hard because what used to can't come so natural, it's just not there anymore. It's like I'm blind, like I can't picture anything in this story and I don't know what to do. I'm literally so awkward. So I got dressed. I actually had a cute outfit on and I went to the cafe and I decided I was gonna try and parallel park. Um, I can parallel park, but the, the car in front of me wasn't a car, it was a motorcycle. And so when I started like, you know, getting close to it, I got really nervous because I'm like, I can't see it that well. And it was right outside of the cafe itself. So like everybody inside can see my botched attempt at a parallel park. So I went home. I didn't go inside. I'm so awkward. Nobody cares. No, nobody cares. And yet I, I, I couldn't go inside. I'm like, I'm so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. So we're home and we're having breakfast. I was gonna go to take a nap after my breakfast, but I have to be up for something that's happening at 1 p.m. So I'm like, dang it. But to be honest, breakfast will take about 20 minutes, maybe like 20 minutes to eat it. So that's 12.20. What's another 40 minutes? Also, let's talk about my last clip where I was all like, um, oh, I can't visualize my story anymore. <laughs> okay, so that day, very same day, I sat down. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get on my Notion and do like the calendar view like I normally do for all my books and like plot out 
on this calendar what is going to happen when in terms of like the plot because like obviously it revolves around Christmas um so I would have to have all the plot points you know make sense in relation to the Christmas time all that stuff so I did that I feel considerably less stressed. I can now picture the story because I can picture what happened, what needs to happen in what order, what needs to progress at what points. Um, yeah, so that was probably the magic fix, all that I was struggling with. Yeah, so, and the thing is I do it with all my books. I, I literally do. I've done it with all the most likely two book stories. That's like as far as my extent of packing goes. Did I say packing? Uh, I meant plotting. You can tell that I am thinking about other things when I'm talking to you. My thumbnail got cut. You know, I was putting my phone in, a, in the tripod and it broke my nail and now I gotta file it. And I don't think I've ever filed my nail before. She gave me these, the nail file and a buff thingy, but like, what do I do with them? How do I use them? But anyway, that was the magic fix all that I had to do. And by golly, I thought of it and we did it. So I was belly aching about in tears yesterday. Today, I'm thinking, what a loser. No, that's not true. It was upsetting at the time. When you feel like, I don't know what to do, I can't think of it. Well, I was definitely upset because to be honest, I didn't do that for Madison's book either, I don't think. I don't think I plotted out what needed to happen when. Um, so I'd be curious if that is the magic fix all for Madison's book as well. I doubt it because like her headspace, ugh, I hate it. And it didn't occur to me because I don't believe I charted Margot's book calendar wise either. Um, for Margot's book, nothing really had to happen in a, on a timeline. So that's why I didn't think to do it, use the calendar view. Um, but it is just helpful to plot out like when, what plot, what plot, what plot point is happening when. It's very helpful to, like to do that. If you're feeling stuck and you feel like you can't picture your story, try using a calendar view. Lay out all the plot points you know need to happen, and then go from there. Because I know for this Christmas book what like plot points need to happen most of, for the most part. I have scenes that I want to happen, scenes I've envisioned. So it's kind of just like, oh, this bread's hard. So it's kind of just like plotting them out that way. So, and then I can see where the blank areas are and I can see when I need to brainstorm a separate scene. Yeah, that's what we did. Well, I didn't do all of that yesterday. I did the majority of that yesterday and then realized some of my beginning makes no sense. And I went back through, reread it, tweaked it a little bit, but Probably today or tomorrow is when I'm going to really go in. I had client work this morning. It was a long one, so we finished it. Kind of strong. And now it's breakfast time. Anyway, that's me right now. I'm going to finish up my breakfast, making it, and then I'm going to consume it. And then, yeah. Okay, so it's 8 o'clock. So we're going to try again. The cafe. The hair is crazy. And, like, I don't want to brush through it with a hairbrush because I feel like they're legging curls so they'll all just fall out but oh my gosh i feel like it's a giving you can't really even tell in this light it's a giving like crazy town like, this is already kind of falling out the bottom part but the top maybe just tuck it behind my ears and that'll be oh, that looks weirder this side i feel like is manageable i, I can manage so maybe we'll just keep this side tucked okay one side is put up other side is down it is 8.20 now, so I'm gonna head out. I'm not really sure how long I'm gonna go for, I guess until the, the creative juices stop flowing. I do have my emotional support Christmas uh, photo card in order to channel the Christmas vibes as I'm writing today. So, I love my life. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go and I will be back. Keep my arm lowered because I did I forgot to shave my armpits for this outfit. <clears throat> I'm back, it's 10.04. I know what you're thinking, all that to only leave the house for an hour and a half. But to be honest, I got like a thousand three hundred words and I feel good about it, so hmm. hello. I just spent the last two hours. Eh, eh I don't know. I'm gonna say two hours in a roundup. Watching stray kids perform at Lollapalooza. I thought I was gonna be able to 
stream it on Hulu, but in order to like watch on Hulu, I had to like, I'd be like late, hours late, because it wasn't like on time, the live stream wasn't on time. It wasn't a live stream. I don't know why they were calling it a live stream, because it wasn't a live stream. It wasn't live. So, what did I do? I bought a VPN, because the Stray Kids YouTube channel was streaming it everywhere else but the United States, I think, because they probably just had like a partnership with all clues like that. So, I bought a VPN. <laughs> just to watch their set at Lollapalooza, and it was amazing. So, so, I will put in clips if I can. I swear, I swear. I think I wrote almost 2,000 words today. It's kind of more of a low key day, but tomorrow is our day. We're gonna go going hard. Um, I wanted to quick talk about the writing course that I'm doing. I posted a video about it Friday, and uh, people were like, oh my gosh, it's so expensive. Yeah, guys. It's expensive. It's super expensive. Like, I, you make the choice for you. You make whatever choice you feel most inclined to take. I am, I'm, I got access to this course for free. So, take of that what you will. I don't know, it's got a ton of information. I'm finding so much great things. I'm picking up so many great things from it and I'm not even like a third of the way through because I'm still trying to catch up. Um, but yes, indeed, it is pricey. I am, I, they reached out to me saying I could take this course for free and just talk about it in videos. So that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. My opinions are still my own. Just gave me access to it and I got to go through it. So like that's a really cool opportunity. So I'm like been trying to make the most of it and kind of really analyze Am I finding this beneficial? And so far I have been. So I wouldn't talk about it if I didn't find it beneficial, but I also did not pay to take the course. That's kind of a weird thing about like sponsorships and collaborations um, with brands. Like I am sharing my genuine thoughts and so far I'm really enjoying it, but I fully understand. I agree. That's a lot of money. I thought I had said in the video that they reached out to me, offered me to take the course for free. I thought I had said that, but maybe I just hadn't made it clear enough. They offered, they reached out to me saying, hey, we like your YouTube channel. We have this course. Um, we'd love to offer you a spot in the course and you know, you take it in exchange for three videos on it. And I'm like, you know what, if if this could help me better my writing career, I definitely want to take this opportunity um, because I do think it's important to never stop learning and growing as a writer. Now, it is up to you how you choose to do that. But as always, I will um, let you know as I go through it. We're going to be going through it together, to be honest. I'm going to be doing like writing vlogs of me doing this course. So if my opinions ever change, I will let you guys know. Um, but like I said, I'm like a third of the way through it and I'm already picking up interesting ways to look at storytelling and like crafting a story. And so far I am enjoying how the information is being portrayed to me. Um, it's clear, it's concise. Anyway, it's 11.30. I am tired, but I also feel kind of wired. I, I didn't even go to a concert and I get wired. It's just like, <sighs> like if I didn't have stray kids, what would I be doing? Like, like, it's it's actually like such a crazy thought to me. If I didn't meet these boys, who would be at my phone case? Who would be at my phone case? Who would be on my fridge? Would I have those TXT cereal boxes? Who knows? I wouldn't have this K-pop wall. I wouldn't, I moved my shelf over there. I wouldn't have a K-pop corner. I wouldn't have any of these things. So what would I have filled my time with? What I filled my life with. The thing is, it's like there was a life before Stray Kids. What was that life like? Productive. It was very productive. That life was very productive. Meeting Stray Kids has hindered my productivity a little bit. A little bit. I would say Stray Kids and K dramas. For sure, sis. We all have our things. But I will see you guys in the morning.